Well, I was going to talk a bit about um, both how High Rise England is doing in RIS 1. Uh, we're about halfway through RIS 1 now, so I think it's a good uh, time to be taking stock and how we're looking forward to uh, RIS 2 uh, and also beyond uh, RIS 2 as well. So a bit of background, uh, Highways England, we're responsible for the strategic road network. Uh, I think we consider this to be arguably the, the backbone of the nation's transport network. So key points, you know, it's only 2% of the nation's roads, but uh, we carry one third of all traffic, two thirds of all freight. So it's more freight than uh, all other roads and all other modes uh, combined. Uh, we recognize we're just one part of a broader transport network though. It is vital that we connect uh, both effectively with local roads, um, but also kind of with other uh, transport modes as well. So obviously we're doing a lot of work at the moment uh, looking at things like how we link in with HS2, uh, development of Heathrow, uh, last mile uh, access in the context of ports, airports, etc. And I think, interestingly, um, demand for the, the SRN continues to grow. Um, it's grown faster than, than all other roads and um, uh, over the past decade or so. So demand for our motorways uh, in particular uh, has grown, uh, grown particularly quickly and is forecast to continue to grow um, as well. And a bit about Highways England. So I was going to play uh, a little video, actually, that we put together that just talks a bit about what we do and how we see our role uh, in actually managing the SRN. At Highways England, we believe in a connected country. We believe that connecting people builds communities. That connecting families with places creates memories. That connecting workers with jobs creates opportunities. And that connecting businesses helps our nation thrive. Our network makes these connections happen. Four million a day. And we make them happen safely, reliably. Because we're the ones who never sleep. The ones who strive to improve our major roads and motorways. The ones who quietly design and plan, build and run. With pride, care and experience. Because our network is vital to the running of the country. We engineer the future to keep people moving today and moving better tomorrow. We've introduced Cockneys to Cornwall and Carlisle to the continent. 4,300 miles driven smarter and smoother. City to countryside, mountain to coast, wherever the people are. What connects them is England. What connects England is us. So that's just a bit really about how we are seeing um, our role. But, but looking backwards as well, um, we were created uh, actually through roads reform. Uh, so this was uh, in... I think March, April 2015, uh, we transitioned from being Highways Agency to Highways England. Uh, and that, that changed the sector as well. So um, we, uh, in effect, had a new relationship with the department um, and it, the transport focus were established um, as the customer watchdog. Uh, and ORR were established as the, uh, the monitor, uh, really overseeing and overlooking our performance. Um, and we were put on a statutory basis, so most importantly, uh, with certainty of a uh, five-year funding and a five-year funding package, and then a long-term strategy and plan through the road investment strategy. Um, and I think at the midpoint of RIS 1, um, so the first RIS, actually I think this system is working quite well. What's been really important is that five-year certainty of funding, and obviously the department are looking to kind of continue that through the lights of the MRN. Um, but the, um, the clarity of funding and the ability to think strategically, so having a RIS, creating a strategic business plan, I think has made a fundamental difference to, to Highways England. Uh, and it makes a fundamental difference how we can plan for the road network in the medium and the longer term as well. So we have gone from a kind of much more short term basis to a much more long term view. But I think we're continuing through that and I think you know, RIS 2 will be even better than, than RIS 1. And I'd also flag, I think the other players in this sector as well are doing their job well and actually making a difference. So Transport Focus are, I think, rightly acting as the voice of the customer. I think have done some really good research um, looking at what the customer wants and what the customer needs. And we, we are tending to partner with them on a lot of work to really try and identify that and make sure we respond to that. 
And similarly, ORR, I think they bring a, a sort of healthy independence uh, and a, a good amount of challenge and focus on areas that perhaps would not naturally be the department's focus. Uh, so particularly kind of a focus on our operations, maintenance, renewals activities, which we view as vital. So I think overall, I would say halfway through RIS 1, actually kind of roads reform has worked well and is making a difference. I think, you know, it's enabling us to plan for the long term uh, and hopefully that's giving the sector as well more confidence and more certainty in where we're going. But how's all that kind of coming together? Um, and I, as I say, at the sort of halfway point uh, in terms of delivery, you know, I, would, I would probably give us a, a sort of solid B+. Plus. Um, I mean, I think there is um, a lot of positives to talk about. So if we look at our delivery agenda, um, we are broadly on track. So uh, we've opened 19 schemes. Uh, we've uh, started work on 15 more um, schemes. I think we've had about 30 schemes move from options to development this year, which is a kind of key milestone in terms of their progress. So broadly, in terms of the delivery agenda and the delivery programme, um, I would say we're on, uh, on track. We also have a number of uh, key performance indicators, most critically through our uh, performance specification. Uh, and there again, I would say um, it is a um, largely positive, although there are some challenging areas. So in particular, I think you know, we are not meeting the safety targets that we set. So I think the evidence is our roads are continuing to get safer but they're not getting safer at the, at the rate that we want them to do. Um, so actually there's more work for us to do and more work for us to do with the industry at large to really try and make sure that we are driving that safety agenda at the pace that we want to. Similarly, we are just under our customer service target, which is um, quite frustrating. And a lot of that is due to roadworks, um, actually. So when we look at effectively our customer responses, generally they're quite satisfied with things apart from roadworks. Um, so I think there's a big question for us, and again, the broader industry, uh, about how do we plan, manage, and deliver our works in a way that impacts uh, as little as possible on our customers. And that challenge is only going to grow, really, as our program ramps up in this latter half of RIS 1 and through to RIS 2. So um, lots of positives, but definitely kind of quite a few um, challenges uh, there as well. And a key focus for us in Highways England has been about building our capability. I appreciate the little picture there. It'll be too small for you to see, but it gives a bit of an overview of the variety of things that we think we need to do to build the organisation uh, through the RIS1 period. And I would say a lot of successes have already happened. So, you know, you have probably seen that the ramp up uh, in our major projects team. Uh, I mean, it is... Uh, you know, two or three times, if not, if not more, the size that it was a, a couple of years ago. And I think we brought in some great capability as well from, uh, from outside and other organisations. Uh, you may be aware in our operational um, operation space, uh, we have a, a big operational excellence agenda. So really looking at how we are understanding what our customers want uh, and actually responding to that and making sure that we're focused on that. Internally as well, we, we, we built, I think, a lot of capability that's really critical to us uh, acting as, a, as an asset owner, an operator, and a, a non-departmental public body as opposed to an agency. So uh, a big shift and a big uh, step change in our capability in terms of economic analysis and value for money assessment. Uh, we've effectively built our own communications team. Uh, our capital portfolio management, again, you know, could be quite immature when we had uh, a small amount of projects that were on the go. With the 112 projects we've got for RIS 1 and kind of coming programs for RIS 2, we've had to really ramp up our capability in capital portfolio management. And I think, again, have done some really good, um, good things there and actually kind of moving towards um, uh, a kind of mature organization in that space. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of progress that we can be, you know, I think rightly proud of within Highways England, but equally, I think we recognise there's a big challenge uh, still to go. Uh, so, a lot more to do if we're going to successfully deliver RIS 1, but then also plan for RIS 2. Uh, and I just wanted to pick up a few points on how we're planning for RIS 2 and what we're thinking uh, about, because we are actually in kind of quite a, uh, I would say, a meaty 
uh, sort of point uh, of, of the RIS2 development process. One of the big things for us on planning for RIS2 and looking for the future is that uh, for the first time uh, in Highways England and Highways Agency's history, you know, we've been able to look forward. Um, so, you know, as a government agency, we were much more, in effect, the recipient of direction and specific project mandates from government. Uh, actually, as Highways England, we think it's our responsibility to look forward to the future and what we think the road network, uh, the future will hold for the road network in the long term and make sure we're planning for that in the medium and short term as well. You may have seen there was a document that was published just before Christmas where we looked at kind of where did, you know, how did we think the road network was going to evolve over the longer term. Uh, and actually, I think it's a really exciting time for our industry. So the National Infrastructure Commission uh, has said that we're in, in an era of roads revolution. Uh, and so have others, and I think, um, I think it is going to be a fascinating period over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, and looking forward um, over that period and over the next few decades, we saw these as the kind of key trends that were impacting. So, so particularly kind of, you know, they, they fall into three, uh, three buckets, so looking at the change in vehicles, how the infrastructure will change, and also how demand will change. Um, on the vehicle side, you've got the trends such as electrification, connectivity and autonomy and mobility as a service, I think which could fundamentally change the way that we use our vehicles and, you know, herald an era of safe, emission-free travel. You know, there's real uncertainty as to how this will play out, but actually I think we know all these trends are coming. On the infrastructure side, uh, you know, we see our assets getting increasingly smart. Uh, we're already looking at how do we innovate and increase productivity in construction. So things like, you know, we're looking at how do we change the nature of our smart motorway, motorway program so it's more standardised, modularised. We think that will drive efficiency um, and also kind of uh, improve the kind of outcome and the quality for our, uh, for our customers. We also know that we need to kind of make sure that we are continuing to focus on the environment and reduce our impact while increasing our resilience. Uh, on the demand side, I think the most important thing on the demographic side is population increases. Uh, so there's lots of changes. Young people are driving less, old people are driving more, but ultimately the demand for our roads largely rests on population growth, and actually most scenarios see the population continuing to grow, so we expect demand on our roads will continue to grow. Increasing kind of obviously importance of freight uh, and uh, making sure that we can kind of meet the demand for on-time con uh, consumption. And the connectivity piece is recognising that both regional connectivity and intermodal connectivity are, are key. Uh, so, you know, we recognise that actually our roads have a really important role to play in, in regional connectivity and kind of creating those agglomeration effects within regions, but then also making sure that we uh, connect to other modes as well. So all of those we see are going to come together and will play out uh, um, to, to sort of shape the future. Again, I'd uh, encourage you, if you may not have seen it, there's a, a document we put out in December called Connecting the Country, Planning for the Long Term. Uh, it presents a bit of a map of how we think these things could play out. One of the really interesting things I think for us is uh, the future, the long-term future, probably looks quite certain and quite clear. But actually that transitional period and, you know, particularly the kind of questions about how some of this new technology will play out is really uncertain. And I think there's real questions and challenges of, for us as an industry in how we manage that interim period, which is going to be coming over the next decade or two. Big question really was how does all of this play back um, and actually kind of shape how we're thinking about the more immediate future, uh, and in particular RIS2, which covers the 2020 to 2025 period. Uh, and where we are in that, you know, there's been a um, uh, probably a much longer uh, kind of research and development process for RIS2 than there was in RIS1. And I'm hoping that that will lead to a much, uh, you know, an even more robust plan than we had in RIS-1. Uh, so where we are at the moment is we put out our initial report, uh, which included the Connecting the Country document, and that all got published just before Christmas. We're now in a sort of year-long period where the department will publish a high-level draft vision for the RIS, uh, and then we will work on that and develop our plans um, uh, in response to that, that will get reviewed by the ORR, and then the department will publish the final RIS uh, in 2019, so likely to be summer 2019. 
And that will set out in more detail, in effect, what the plans and the funding, etc., is for that second RIS period. And I think we've tried to make sure that uh, everything that we do as part of RIS2 is based on uh, a significant amount of research, a significant amount of engagement. You may have seen we d undertook the root strategies, which are, uh, I think, a light uh, seven or 800 pages of, of analysis around all of the different routes on our network, what the challenges are, and actually where do we see the challenges in the future and thinking about how we could meet them. The road to growth looked at uh, the nature of the relationship between roads and the economy and how we could actually kind of invest in a way that maximizes our impact on the economy. And then the strategic studies are some of the big potential new schemes that uh, you know, we will tackle, I think, in RIS2, but also beyond RIS2. Uh, so this included the likes of Oxford to Cambridge, uh, the Manchester sort of M60 Northwest Quadrant, um, also looking at the Transpennine Tunnel uh, and Northern Transpennine. So big, tend to be billion pound plus uh, schemes that, that you know, we think can change the economic geography of the country. As I say, all of that was based on a lot of customer and stakeholder feedback. We did thousands of interviews as part of the root strategies and other work, and that has all kind of come together in the, um, in the SRN initial report. And just to kind of pull out the, the key messages and, and I think our key uh, priorities uh, that we see for RIS2 is, is really sort of as outlined on the left here. Um, so the most important thing is, you know, number one, we said it's really vital that we focus on operations, maintenance and renewals. Uh, and it was uh, no accident that we, we put that first. I think it's vital that we, um, we do make sure that we kind of can keep the network uh, in a decent standard. But then going beyond that and looking to the enhancements, we want to continue building uh, the smart motorway spine uh, of the network. We also want to uh, roll out expressways. So we have started to roll out expressways um, uh, on our roads. We see them as kind of a really important, uh, important kind of way of providing motorway quality uh, journeys, but without actually providing a motorway. Uh, we're very cognizant that the next generation of transformational schemes will need to be taken forward. Um, Oxford to Cambridge is obviously very high on the government's agenda, but we'll also be building A303, Lower Thames Crossing, etc. in RIS2. But equally, it's very important that we get a balanced program. Uh, so, you know, one of the things we want to be careful of is that we don't overweight towards those mega schemes, that we actually do do enough of the medium size and small size schemes. Uh, we're very keen to continue designated funds, so some of you will be aware of the, the likes of the cycling investments, environmental investments, others uh, that we've done in RIS1. We think they're really important, and we actually want to kind of make sure that they continue. And we want to lay the foundation for the future. Uh, so this is about sort of thinking about new technologies such as connected and autonomous vehicles. We're doing trials on platooning, we're doing some 5G trials, etc. I think a lot of that is going to become more of a reality in that 2020 to 2025 period. So we need to set ourselves up to make sure that we can enable uh, that technology change. So where next? Basically, there's been a consultation on this, which hopefully you may have been aware of. That's just recently finished. Uh, and actually, that all then feeds into DFT's draft RIS, and then we're going to be doing a draft strategic business plan. Uh, and as I said, uh, the final RIS will be published in 2019, and then following that, we will do our um, strategic business plan uh, and delivery plan, which will set out the plans for the future uh, in detail.